Um, so it's kind of a newish concept for some, some people, although it's been there for a while. Um, so let's kind of look at, you know, where corporate venturing falls within the spectrum of, you know, venture capital and private equity investors and, and everything uh, that's out there. You know, where do you guys actually fit in? You know, so Not to offend on any other of my uh, venture capital brethren here, uh, but there is a prevailing uh, uh, scuttlebutt around the ecosystem that uh, CVC arms should not be participating in the asset class. Uh, they are liquidity options. And uh, uh, I would say uh, that is, in all cases, not true. Where we like to fit is, is uh, I like to see it as, uh, in fact, our money may be a little bit greener. Uh, and certainly my investment practice, I like to bring uh, certainly the capital and we participate in, in, in deals very much aligned to venture capital terms that you would see on any firm on Sand Hill Road. Uh, but I'd like to say what I think we're able to offer um, is some of the auxiliary services that traditional VC shops can't bring. Uh, one of my goals besides the deployment of capital is to bring external innovation internally. And one of the differentiations with my practices is I'm able to bring to bear the $17 billion public company and some of the resources that are involved with that. CVC is fairly complex in my opinion, right? It really depends on the CVC, to be honest, at the end. Um, there are so many different approaches um, in, in the industry. And I think as a, as a founder, um, it's really important uh, to understand um, what the strategy of the CVC is that you are talking to, right? Because there might be companies um, that purely focus on um, a strategic value and, and driving m and There might be other companies that are really like VCs, right? At the end, uh, traditional VCs. Um, so I think it's fairly complex to understand um, the CVC environment um, and recommendation for everyone before you engage, I guess, with, with anyone. It's one of the most important decisions of a founder, right? Or of a startup in general, like what kind of investor do you wanna have on your cap table? Um, who do you wanna have in your board that helps you grow your company? Um, first of all, understand um, like the vision and, and the strategy and the goals of, of the people that you are talking to. And that, in my opinion, doesn't count only for CVC. It's actually pretty similar for VC as well. From our perspective, um, and obviously we are more in the camp of like trying to be a VC plus value add. Um, so from our perspective, um, CVC done right is really like adding value on top of a VC process. Um, and what that means is like you, you got to be as fast as a VC, you got to be able to structure deals like a VC. Um, and you also got to be able to execute those <laughs> like a VC. Yeah. Um, and then what comes basically after you have done the deal. So, I mean, two things. Uh, do, during diligence, obviously, being part of a larger conglomerate allows you to do diligence that often VCs can't do, right? From like real deep technical stuff, like analyzing a LiDAR sensor or like, you know, getting data on a new radar sensor or like some sensor fusion data, like this kind of stuff as a VC is super hard to do. Now there are firms who do like hard tech and have their own engineers slash experts in the network. Um, but for most typical center road VCs, it's almost impossible to do this kind of stuff uh, in a timely and effective and you know good manner. Top of everyone's mind is COVID and the crisis that COVID has brought in that pretty much every industry in the world, across the world is affected. So how has this changed your investment thesis? Um, you know, how has this impacted you? Do you see this as a crisis uh, unfolding or do you see opportunity within this crisis? Because of the COVID situation, I would agree with, with Stephanie. It did, you would have thought that it would have changed a little bit more and on how we did deals, but uh, uh, we uh, use Zoom or whatever, use WebEx or whatever very effectively. And I think it's, at least it's very Silicon Valley like that. I think uh, uh, the entrepreneurs, the VCs, uh, everyone has, has pretty much adopted to that very quickly. So it'd be interesting to see as we come off of uh, you know, the COVID crisis, are we really going to be uh, going back into the office full time and, and things like that? Because uh, the efficiencies were actually uh, uh, were, were, were pretty good. Um, that being said, in terms of uh, investments and stuff like that, I. I think during COVID, I, it really did show a lot about um, the importance of core infrastructure. And as you can see now, we have a semiconductor shortage going on because of all of the uh, uh, devices and, and uh, systems and 
and such that you really, really need in place to uh, serve a, a more uh, uh, mobile workforce out there. So, uh, you know, I think that kind of benefits a lot of folks that are investing in, in those spaces going forward. 